Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, September 10th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of medicine. UCLA researchers have discovered, or isolated rather, a new type of cell critical to the development of the immune system. All blood cells, including those in the immune system, come from bone marrow. Unfortunately, most researchers use mouse bone marrow or, in certain cases, human umbilical cord blood. These researchers used human bone marrow and were particularly looking for the progenitor of the immune system. Now this should not be confused with stem cells. Bone marrow stem cells can essentially divide infinitely and become a blood cell. However, it's not a direct transition. A marrow cell will first divide and become a progenitor cell before differentiating into something specific, like a red blood cell. Because the immune system is very complex, it contains many different types of immune cell, aka lymphocyte, and each with their own progenitor. Previous research had identified one of these mature progenitors capable of becoming only one subtype of lymphocyte. Fortunately, this new study of human bone marrow did discover a more primitive progenitor. They analyzed the gene expression and found it had sections similar to bone marrow stem cells, but also unique expressions when this progenitor was active. Further study will hopefully lead to new ways of boosting the immune system, especially after a bone marrow transplant. Increasing activity of these progenitor cells could help a new immune system develop after a patient's was destroyed by treatment. Our next story comes from the world of biotechnology, interestingly, as it applies to robotics. Often on Brainstorm, when we discuss robotics and other technologies, there's a theme of biomimicry, taking inspiration from the natural when designing technology. Now this approach is understandable. Life has had millions of years of evolution and a planet-sized laboratory to develop systems, so nature is very good at certain things. Robots, on the other hand, are definitely lacking in certain areas. Researchers at MIT and the University of Pennsylvania decided to skip mimicking biology and just started to use it. This is called the bio-integrated approach and is being used to create robots that can move and articulate precisely using living muscle cells. A question was how to activate muscles within the artificial environment. Normally it's done by neurons, and scientists have long been able to replicate that using electrodes, but in a robot that could be a bit unwieldy. So they borrowed from the relatively new field of optogenetics, modifying cultured muscle cells to produce light-sensitive proteins. These cells, also called myoblasts, were fused into muscle fibers and responded to blue laser pulses just as expected. Narrow beams caused a very specific section to twitch while wider pulses triggered more fibers. Next, some 3D muscle tissue was created and tested using a micromechanical chip. The engineered muscle was attached to flexibility posts inside the chip. Light triggered the muscle to contract and the strength could be measured by seeing how much the post bent, because each post had a specific flexibility. Obviously this isn't quite ready to be integrated into robots, but an important first step toward that goal. It could allow for highly articulate endoscopes, as well as other robotic applications and even biomedical potential. Even in this early stage of development, they could still be useful for exposing muscle tissue in this chip to drugs, to test how they affect it and perhaps counter certain muscular conditions. And we end with an update from the world of biotechnology. A new study by scientists at UC San Diego has analyzed enzymes and suggests that they may be sloppier than is conventionally thought. Here on Brainstorm, we talk a lot about enzymes. Most biology or medical stories involve them in some way because they are so crucial to life. Enzymes are proteins that accelerate chemical reactions in an organism and basically make everything happen. It's traditionally thought that enzymes were once very promiscuous, but over time evolved to become highly specialized. This makes sense. If an enzyme has a particular function, any interaction with unrelated reactions would reduce efficiency and, by extension, the organism's overall fitness. Certainly, evolution produces highly specialized enzymes, but not all are like this. Creating an entire model of metabolism for E. coli revealed that around 37% of those enzymes catalyze multiple reactions. Using this model, they determined that the less crucial an enzyme was to growth and survival, the more likely it was to be promiscuous. Also, that these multitasking molecules weren't detrimental to the organism, but actually have certain advantages. Critical enzymes need to be as efficient as possible, but for others, having multiple functions could give organisms some flexibility in a rapidly changing environment. Ultimately, this study will hopefully bring attention to an understudied aspect of enzyme biochemistry, especially considering enzyme sloppiness may have implications in certain diseases like leukemia and brain tumor. 
Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.